Okay, so here's what happened. Um, this microphone that we've been using, this newer microphone, when you first hook it up, it defaults to mute, and uh, we forgot that. So now it's not <laughs> muted, and you should be able to hear us. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the introductions again. You know who we are. Um, we're talking about ways to get your home ready for fall or autumn, if you prefer. Um, and we have 30 of them. We're not going to do all 30. Yep. Okay. Because well, well, some of them, not all of them really relate to utilities. Catch them up on energy services, though. Okay, so here's we what we were going to do. We didn't right. hear anything. Okay, uh, here's what we were going to do. We were going to talk about 30 smart tips. Well, we weren't going to talk about 30. We're gonna, ways to get your home ready for fall or autumn and the weather changes therein. Uh, but the energy services guys, and these are the guys who uh, come in, they'll, they'll look at your home and say, okay, here's how you can make it more energy efficient and stuff like that. Uh, they don't check for ghosts. No, By the way, you gotta get somebody else for that. Um, they have. They also do new homes, like Caitlin's. And uh, but they have forty-five homes that they gotta get through. Uh, new homes today. So it's Which a good about, problem. Yeah. It's about double their normal amount. There's yeah. a lot of new homes. Which is a good right problem now. for for our guys to have. Yes. I mean, it shows the growth that is uh, going on. But uh, by the time we found out about that. It was like an hour away from show starting and we couldn't come up with anything else. So we, we have a list that we're going to go through and we're just going to discuss them. And anybody want to chime in before we dive in here? Oh, I, I had a really high utility bill. <sighs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever yeah. figure out why? Didn't I, we talk about this yesterday? I think it has something to do with my AC fan and I think it has something to do with my grim, I mean my, not gremlins, children. <laughs> I think my children are leaving, like, so we've switched over a bunch of our lights to LED lights, mm -hmm. but there are certain lights in my house that I know for a fact are not switched over yet to LEDs. And those are the ones that I think the kids keep leaving on. Because oh. like halogen lights and stuff, yeah, they, they, yeah, they still, they, they use some power. Yeah. So anyway, hopefully we'll cover, hopefully I'll learn something because I, I'm, my kids are not allowed to touch the thermostat anymore, and now we've got to maybe. I think we need to seal up our house. I'm in an older house. Yeah, I think I my can house speak about that because I learned about sealing up your house since I have a new home, and it went through our energy efficient new home program. So I learned a lot. Yeah, cool. Okay. Well, we will be starting with the interior of the house, and the first thing we have here is check for drafts. Yep. And yep. we got our masks on, so we're trying to talk a little louder and enunciate a little bit more, but, you know, we're trying. Um, check for drafts. Feel for drafts around the edges of windows and doors. A good tip is to use a lighted candle. And if the flame flickers, as you are, uh, there is most likely a draft. Yeah. Now, don't do the lighted candle thing too close to the curtains. No, that would even That would not be good. That would, you'd find out how flammable they are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In my house, though, it's okay because our curtains are all made out of asbestos. Right. Great. Um, yeah, I already know that my front door, you, you can also, oh. not just the candle thing, but I have an older front door. It's a beautiful old wood front door. But just barely, if you're looking the right direction, you can actually see light. Mm -hmm. I know that's bad. I yes. know that's bad. So, um, and insulation around doors, I, that stuff has to get replaced every couple of years. Well, not I mean, insulation, the caulking. Not insulation, you're talking uh, about oh, the, the, the little the squishy. The seal. Yes, the yeah. seal. The little squishy parts. Yeah. 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 See, I like, that, I like that seal to be so tight that when you open the door, it goes... <laughs> Like that. <laughs> like you're getting in and out of a submarine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we've checked for drafts. Well, I mean, we talked about it. Did we still not fix the sound? Our supervisor is telling us that we're still having sound issues. Um, so for those that are watching, if you can let us know, can you hear us? Can you not? Um, or is it just Gary? Oh, no. Gary said no. It's working. So I think we're good. Okay. It's interrupted the flow of the show. Yeah. 
Sorry for all of the technical issues today, y'all. It's it's Friday and we're tired. Yeah, late. To be honest with you, it's been a week. I don't think I can. Yeah, we're good. I think we're yeah, good. No, don't, don't. Yeah. Okay, I won't, I won't. Stop touching. Don't mess with you. <laughs> Stop touching. Um, I'm going to walk away. Sorry. Number two, have Thanks. your furnace inspected. This, this yes. might be something for you. That's definitely on my list. Hire an HVAC professional to test for leaks, check heating efficiency, and change the filter. Well, you can change the filter yourself. Yeah. And you should be changing the filter. Every month. I change mine on the first of every month. Yep. Got to change it. Even in the winter time, because... I think sometimes people think about it only in the summertime when their stuff is running, but you gotta change it in the winter too, once a month. Yeah. Uh, they can also do a carbon monoxide check to ensure air safety, and it's also a good idea to stock up on extra air filters. Well, I mean, that's up to you if you wanna stock up on air filters. Yeah. It's, it's a great thing about this country, it's we have air filters in abundance. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't think you need to like, you it's know, not like go all doomsday paper. prep on the air filter. It's so. all like, yeah. I will for a little bit because with the new home, all the construction dust is still working its way out of the ducts. So I have to replace mine like at least twice a month. It's what some people do it. It depends on your frequency. You just check it to see how it looks. Yeah. That yeah. reminds me. Yes. Okay. So in my house, we had, we're in the process of replacing our living room floor, but we had those, and it kind of looked like this actually. Um, and they, they're like the planks and you stick them on the floor and everything. Okay, so it seems to me, and this might help you, that what you could do instead of work, is get a leaf blower. Mm. If you've got a floor like that, why can't you just sweep the floor with a leaf blower? Because then you're kicking all the dust you're up in no, the air. No, no, because like, like our way, living room has like these double doors that go out in the backyard. You just open those up and you just... Sounds well, like a very man thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> I can't do that. All right, well, we're um, we're gonna apologize for that tip. I don't see why <laughs> you can't do that. Winterize your air conditioning. Yep. Yes. I used to have to winterize my motorcycle. I never liked that because it meant it was winter. Yeah. Mm. If your home has central air conditioning and you live in a climate where you won't need it any longer, it may be necessary to cover your outdoor unit for winter. Oh. If you use window air conditioning units, remove them or cover to prevent leaks. Now, I'm going to disagree on removing your window air conditioner. I'm going to disagree on that. Yeah, that's because, insane. because it's heavy, for one thing, and I just don't want to do that. And also, I mean, now you got like, you know, you have more potential, cracks. more potential for leak yeah. and draft. Right. Yep. Well, yeah. and it's Alabama, so if you don't like the weather today, just wait till tomorrow. Yeah, it doesn't get that cold here. We don't and have. it doesn't stay that cold very often. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, now here's one, you were just talking about this, the programmable thermostat. Yes. If you're homeless, oh, I read that one already. Buy a programmable thermostat if you don't have one. Well, duh. Okay. Buy one if you have one. Um, <laughs> if you already have one, check the temperature settings. It reminds me of that episode of MASH where the unexploded bomb is in the middle of a thing and Hawkeye and Trapper are trying to defuse it and Henry's shouting on the bullhorn and he tells them to cut the wire and they cut the wire and then he says, but first, and then, okay. Um, setting your thermostat to lower the temperature automatically at night and when you're not home can result in substantial cost savings. Yes. I personally would like to have, I don't have programmable thermostats. Oh well, yeah, I had, the, I had one that was on my phone that I could adjust. Fancy. That Adjusting the temperature on your phone? I could adjust the temperature oh, okay. in my well, you house. You made it sound like you had a thermostat phone. on your phone. That didn't make any sense. Well, well kind of, because of the app. Yeah, the app. Yeah, well, she said, said I had the app that controls it on my phone, not I had the thermostat on my phone. Well, semantics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I, programmable thermostats are, it's amazing how much just adjusting the temperature at night can have a drastic effect on your utility bill. This is true. Mm -hmm. And see, and I don't have the, uh, I don't have one, but I want one because uh, I still have two kids living at home and they both have very drastic uh, temperature. I don't know. They're both running at different idle speeds. I don't right. know. Uh, and so my son, he will go upstairs, their bedrooms are upstairs, and he will crank that mother down. Right. Okay. And then I go up and, and you know, to get, you know, whatever I need for whatever I'm doing and it's freezing up there. But in the middle of the night, if my daughter wakes up, she will crank it the other way. Excellent. <laughs> so I want to have like a programmable thing. So what I want it to do is I want it to uh, like um, shock them. Yeah. If they touch it. Right. 
<laughs> That's what I want to program it to do. Or put a passcode on it. Oh, yeah. have mercy. Uh, okay, test home safety devices, replace batteries and all smoke detectors and carbon monoxide. Okay, that's, yeah. And you know, the old rule of thumb is you do that uh, when you move the clocks back or forward. Yes. But if I have my way, and one of these days, when I am, when I am king, day one, we're doing away with this clock changing nonsense. I know. Well, you're not the only one. It has come up not only in our state legislature, but it is coming up on the federal level. My title is legislator and regulatory analyst, so I'm constantly watching what the government is doing. Um, so yeah, it has come up on the federal level. So you're not the only one that wants yeah, to change I'm, it. I'm tired of this. I hate it. Tractors have headlights. Yes, we don't need do. this anymore. I'm tired of the clock changing nonsense. Yeah, I am too. But anyway, that's when they would tell you to change your batteries. And yeah. All that. Hmm. So. You'll have to, if I get my way, you'll have to find another time to remember to do that. Um, the smoke detector in the kitchen does work, though. I find that I changed that one. Is that the alarm you used to tell you when the food's done? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> clean your humidifiers. I don't have a humidifier. If you have one, clean it. Replace okay. old filters and clean inside the compartment. Vinegar is inexpensive and works well. I guess they're suggesting you use vinegar to clean it and not, they're just stating a fact. Right. Vinegar is inexpensive, okay. Yeah, you can get, you can get, a great you can get supply. cleaning vinegar. Okay. Yeah. My sister-in-law, because you're supposed to clean your coffee pot with vinegar. Yep. Okay. Yep. And my sister-in-law uh, is a hairstylist, and I used to have a lot of hair, and um, I would go over to her apartment and get free haircuts, and I went over there one morning because I was working a graveyard shift, and she asked me if I wanted a cup of coffee. And I said, yes, and she brought me a cup of coffee, and I started to take a drink of it, and then something didn't taste right. And um, I asked her, I said, is this like flavored coffee? And she said, no, it's just regular old Folgers or whatever it was. She had cleaned, she had run straight vinegar through the coffee pot, and then not run water through afterwards to <gasps> clean it. Oh, no. So she ran the vinegar through, then poured water in and made a cup of coffee. No. Can't do that. Yeah, make sure you run another cycle of just water to rinse it out. Uh, okay, all right, so that's interior maintenance. Is there anything we, on interior we want to talk about? Um, it didn't talk about insulation at all. And I think of insulation, or is that kind of coming? Well, up? I don't know. Okay. Well, I didn't read these first. I wanted okay. to be surprised. Surprise! Okay. Well, what are you going to do about your insulation? Rip the well, walls out and put more in? No, no, no. Up on the seat, you can, you can get blown in insulation. Well, yeah. And, I was thinking about it in between the walls. Yeah. And then on the floor. Well, maybe you talked about that. Because the first one on the exterior maintenance is do a roof check. Okay. Yes. But then a pop-up ad came up and it, uh, it covers up part of the text. <laughs> it does. Right here, there's a pop-up ad and it covers up like all four of them. Apparently um, it is Facebook struggle live yeah. Friday. <laughs> uh, this is basically just asking you know, if you got like shingles coming loose. So, okay. we, you know, we're not worried about that. Uh, check the chimney and fireplace. Are we worried about that? I mean, I, we're looking for utility-related things. Right. I don't, I don't think we're worried about that. Yeah. Uh, stock up on firewood, no. Inspect your siding, no. I got a piece of siding been dangling loose from my house for months. And you haven't gotten a kid to fix it? I, I've called people to come fix it, and they never show up. All right, so that's uh. page one. Um, <laughs> Score. <laughs> clean the gutters, check water drainage, reinforce windows and doors. Okay, here's one. Turn off faucets and store your hoses. Yes. Now, I know you're big on this one. You yes, brought this I up. am. I'll let you talk about this. Okay, so I've owned a townhouse before. This is my first single family home, I guess. Beards and masks don't mix very well. I know, right? <laughs> you're making me feel itchy just watching me. I know, you. I can't help it. I mean, um, so, anyway, this was brought up several times by not only my home inspector, but also the construction supervisor and just multiple people throughout the process. Winterizing your home um, from the outside, make sure that you wrap, whether it's just a towel, you can get certain caps that go over the outside, water spigots and faucets, um, but make sure you detach your hose from it and let all the water drain out. Because a lot of the, such as a newer home, there is a mechanism that is in the pipe inside the wall that shuts it off so that it's leak proof and it um, helps winterize your home on the inside of the wall. But that means if you keep your hose on there, if the shut off valve is on the inside of the wall, you have a bit of space where water can pool up if you don't remove the hose from the pipe. And so that will freeze and expand, which will burst the pipe. 
but you won't know it until come springtime when it's really time for you to start using the pipe again. And then you'll start seeing water leaking from the bottom of your wall on the inside and it's a whole big mess. So remove your hoses, make sure all the water is drained out and then winterize it by protecting it with as simple as a, a hand towel or you can go to one of your they make these little things, yeah. Yeah, they're like these little things. foam caps that yeah. go around it too. So you can buy those. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go, everybody. Uh, service sprinklers and irrigation system. I don't have a sprinkler system, so I don't know much about this. But it says here, depending on your climate, your irrigation system <coughs> may need to be drained and checked. Have a professional perform any necessary repairs and mark sprinkler heads near snow, snow removal areas. That okay. Makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. Nobody got anything on that one? Nope. No. Uh, inspect trees. Okay, I'm only including this one because it mentions actually, you know, if you notice you got some trees that are a little close to the power lines, let us know. Don't do it yourself. Um, something distracted me on the TV up there because I went like that and it looked like somebody's hand moved <laughs> in front of the camera. And I'm like, how do we do that? Um, how do we get on Comcast? Um, okay, but anyway, yeah, if it's near the power line, don't, don't go hacking at it yourself. Because first of all, it's dangerous. Right. Mm -hmm. And second of all, and we've had this happen fairly recently, mm -hmm. where somebody was doing that and they they dropped a big chunk of tree on a power line and knocked out power to their neighborhood. So okay. don't 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 be doing that. We we got guys that can do that. They know yes. how to do that. Uh, close your pool if you got one. <clears throat> I don't have a pool. I don't either. My mother does. I you know ugh, don't get me started on that. Um, if you know how to do it yourself, you can do it yourself, or you can call somebody to do it. Okay, so that's exterior. All right, now we got integrate what? Well, one thing that I didn't talk about is also it's checking for draft. It kind of you're checking. We talked about on the inside with using a candle to see if there's any draft coming through. <laughs> okay. I tried to do that. I tried drinking through it earlier to see if I could, and it wouldn't work. No. Again, Facebook struggle Friday. Um, so one of the things you need to check routinely on the outside of your house around your windows and the doors is the caulking to make sure that it hasn't degraded and another thing you want to check is the insulation wrapped around your air conditioning units pipes and hoses that go inside your house um, because if that degrades if that goes <coughs> off then it could keep your ac unit running continuously it could cause um, you know backups or freezing of the lines so make sure that you walk around and check that the caulking around your windows and your doors is still sufficient. It's you know it's still it's kicking whatever you want to say that it's still good right. um, because otherwise you'll get air seepage in as well as air seepage out. So for exterior, I was going to mention this one, but then I realized that it's not what I thought it meant. It says plant bulbs, but they're not talking about light bulbs. We're talking no, about that. Okay, so we're, we, don't, we don't have to talk about that because I can't think of why. No, you don't. <laughs> they don't grow on trees. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now we go into the garage. They're only really, they got six here. I'm not going to do all of them. Uh, test the generator if you have one. If you have an emergency generator for power outages, give it a test and make sure it's in good working order. It shouldn't well, be in the garage, though. That's the <coughs> yeah, don't run it in the garage. Yeah, don't run it in the garage. But it's stored there until you need it. Gotcha. Yeah, unless you've got one of those, because some people have like the big ones, and yeah, uh, and buy extra gasoline for the previously mentioned generator. And don't don't backfeed your generator. When we sent these guys down to uh, Baldwin County, Fair. took me a second. Um, that was one of the things they kept, you know, before you know, when they when they were talking to the guys where they left, they kept saying, "Look, be cautious." of people backfeeding generators down there. Uh, and we've talked about backfeeding before. It's a way you can kind of MacGyverize your generator to run back, well, not backwards, but power everything in your house yeah. by making a homemade. Electricity doesn't care which way it yeah, flows. Yeah, electricity is just going to go. And so it's <laughs> going back up on the lines. And there are, you hear a number of times every year of, of line workers being seriously injured and even killed uh, by not knowing that there was juice coming back through the line while they're trying to make repairs on it because there should not have been juice there right. save for the fact that someone was back feeding a generator so don't do that um just don't yeah. do it we can't stress that enough because that's a big big problem yeah. uh, it is illegal in some jurisdictions i don't know about alabama i don't think it is in alabama hmm. but in some states it is illegal to back feed a generator yeah. uh, for some reason when i printed out this uh 
article and also gave me simple seven simple rules to live by to get in shape in two weeks. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that. Um, but what I am going to go into is your comments and questions with Caitlin. We got any comments and questions? Um, really? No. Besides earlier when I was asking to make sure that everyone could hear. Um, so thank you for those that commented to let us know that our sound is in fact working now. Um, let me make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, okay, so Sean did ask, doesn't it cost more to turn a light off and on rather than keep it on? I have heard that. Depends on the Here type was the of thing. Bulb, it depended on the type of bulb. And when this was actually, from what I understand, don't quote me on this, I might be wrong, but I remember reading this once before. And a very long time ago, before I was in this business, this crazy, nutty, cuckoo business we're in now. It depended on how the light bulbs were made. Yes. Because there were some light bulbs that, if you turned them on, it caused actually a little... And so I, I imagine like this is the, uh, the line of how much electricity you're using. And the light bulb is off, and then when you turn it on, it would cause like a, like a spike. Right. And then it would come back down to normal. So that's where that comes from. It's not really the case now. Not with LEDs. Not with LEDs, and really not, from what I understand, not with incandescents the way they're made now. Right. But there was a time, and it wasn't a drastic amount of money. Now, if you're sitting here doing this all day, <laughs> you know. Have yeah, you yeah. seen my son do that? I'm sure he does. That reminds me of a joke. Okay, so, <clears throat> you know, everybody's got that outlet or that light switch in their home that doesn't appear to do anything, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I had one of those in the place where I lived, and I would just sit there, because it was next to the phone, and I would sit there, and I would just, you know, flick it on and off and on and off. And one day, I'm doing that, I heard a knock on my door, I opened up the door, and there was a lady from East Germany there. She said, stop that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have heard that before. Um, I don't believe that is the case now. If, you, if I'm wrong, yeah. you know, correct me. You wouldn't be the first. So. Anything else? Nope, that is it for Okay, now. so now we're going to move on to the lightning round. Okay, this is this is the fun part of the show. Some of these are uh, utility related. Some of them aren't. They're just fun to talk about. Researchers in Austria and Japan placed an alligator in a box then filled the box with helium to see if breathing it in would change how the alligator's voice sounded. What? <laughs> Poor alligator. <laughs> yeah. You can Google this and watch the experiment. Oh, I did that this morning. Sounds kind of terrible. I feel like... Okay, so, like and now alligators, it's not like alligators talk. No. But they may like, rah, like that. So, yes or no, does helium, and they were doing this, this basically, they were doing an experiment on vocalizations and alligators. Do you think it worked, yes or no, that the helium affected the alligator's uh, quote-unquote voice? Uh, I, I mean, I guess it did. I, it affects our voices. I don't know. Caitlin? I'm going to say no. Since you said yes, I'll be the devil's advocate here and say no. Okay, in this case, the point goes to Amanda. It did, in oh. fact, change the alligator's voice. Interesting. Are we getting into trouble yet? Nope. No, nope. Right. Okay, so that's that one. And you can Google that experiment. Just type in uh, alligator on helium. Yes. And it will show you. I mean, it's not like when we do it, and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but, but there's a noticeable difference. Okay. Plus, you know, it's not like the alligator's actually saying anything. He's probably an alligator talk saying, get me out of this box <laughs> of helium. <Right>. But, <clears throat> okay. An Illinois man is celebrating an interesting anniversary. Uh, this week was the 60th anniversary of the day he received a half-eaten sandwich from Richard Nixon. Okay. Yes. Steve Jenny of Sullivan, Illinois was a Boy Scout when the future president visited his town for a campaign stop in 1960. Mr. Nixon ate half of a buffalo chicken sandwich at a cookout, which Jenny then took home and put in his freezer. And he's had it ever since, for 60 years. Uh, I'm speechless. That's, yeah. yeah. All right, wow. Nothing I mean, on that? Nothing on that. Maybe the DNA is on there and he can clone himself another Nixon. There you go. I don't know. I don't know how Tony works. I'm just real <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> and, you know, I, there was a joke in there somewhere about how, you know, uh, he started eating the sandwich and, and then resigned. 
Um, but I, I just couldn't get there. Uh, okay, now, Christmas, the holiday shopping season right around the corner. I have found what I want. Halloween! Okay, but go ahead. I have found what I want. And if you guys want to pool your funds and get this. Okay. The Australian airline Qantas. We've all heard of Qantas. I've flown Qantas. Really? Interesting. Yes, a couple of times. Oh. I like that airline. Well, Australian airline Qantas is selling 1,000 of their fully stocked bar carts from their recently retired fleet of 747s. The carts are stocked with champagne, Australian wines, Tim Tam cookies. Is that an Australian thing? Yes. Yep. Tim Tam cookies, pajamas, and first class Sheridan throw pillows. You can have the, and you get the thing, you know, the, roll, the thing they roll down the thing. Yeah. You can get that fully stocked for $685. I don't know if that's Australian dollars or, or real dollars. <laughs> um, or 169,000 Qantas points. Do you get any Qantas points? No, I rolled my Qantas points into American Airlines. Mm. I want one of these. Okay. And we can keep it in here. Qantas is, I, I, I gotta say, if I fly to Australia, I fly Qantas. How many times do you like fly to Australia? Like, my, my kids are Australian. Oh, that's right. No, that's right. I've been there four times. So like I've been there kangaroos hopping up and down the aisles and stuff? Or? Yes, absolutely. No, one, one does, thing does I the like plane Does the plane fly like a boomerang and like it does this the whole time and then comes back to where it started? Makes me do the, do the stewardesses say crikey a lot? Yes. They do. I, I don't know. Yes. I, got, I'm, I got a million of these. Okay. Yeah, oh, here's what you do. Here's what, here's the, if you're applying Qantas, well, you can't do this anymore. I was going to say, when they, when, when they bring you your food on the meal, when they put it down in front of me, you go, you call that a knife? This is a knife. But you can't take your knives on airplanes anymore. No. But it'd be funny if you could do that. No. I'm sure somebody's done that. So on Qantas, I flew with babies on more than one occasion. And they have uh, a seat that you can pull down, or if you're in the bulkhead, you can pull down this thing, and they have a bassinet for the baby to sleep in. And Nadia slept the whole way to Australia in that bassinet. The oh. entire flight, she slept. Oh, that's, uh, that's why I had kids. Yeah. So I could pre-board airplanes. It, yeah. Okay, uh, we have no guests today on Facebook Live Friday, but if they did, if we did, they would receive, of course, a year's supply of turtle wax and rice and the San Francisco treat. So, thank you for watching. Sorry about the technical problems at the beginning. Of course, if you have a comment, question, observation, or a topic you would like to see discussed on a future episode of Facebook Live Friday, um, I don't know why I do this. We've done like 27 episodes. Yeah. How many people have sent us a topic they would like to have discussed? We've got I can one. answer that. None. No, we got we got one. Who? I can't remember. See, one you're, of no, our, you're making that up. No, I'm not making it up. We did Never have happened. one person suggest. So to please Todd, please. Well, because we, you know, here's what here's what happens. We shoot this show Friday at ten, and when do we usually come up with a topic? Well, if we're lucky, Thursday by three o'clock. Yeah, well, we start talking and about we it always, the week. Yeah, but we never follow. We always say, okay, this Monday we're sitting down and we're talking about it, and we never do it. No, I come up with a topic and then COVID changes everything. Okay, well, anyway, if you got something, you know, put it in there. Um, I want to give you an update on Baldwin County. There are about 1,400 meters still without power in Baldwin County, so our crews are still down there. And they sent us a picture of an alligator today, which we will post later. Um, yeah, I don't know the context, but I mean, it there. was an alligator. You can see it, and he's watching them, there. or uh, she's watching the, them. In the tough zone of the, you know, the, they're doing a lot of tedious tasks right now to yeah. try to get people on. Wait, did the alligator um, had it breathe any, any helium? I don't think so, because it wasn't in a box. The thing go to, to like a balloon place and get some helium. But anyway, put the, let us know what you want us to talk about, and we'll talk about it. Um, I ain't got anything else. Anybody else got anything? Um, if anybody needs an energy survey done on their house, they can contact us. Yes. You know. And there's, like an email, yeah, there's an email address. It's like energy at hsvutil.org. I think so. Yeah, I you know can it find is. it on our website. Well, yeah, but I yes. know it's energy. Um, so our guys will come in. They'll do an audit of your home to tell you how energy efficient your home is or isn't and what you can do to make your home more energy efficient. I highly recommend it. They're super knowledgeable. They did the rough end inspection for my new home. They did the final inspection to determine, you know, if it met the energy code. Um, I mean, 
They're here yeah. for a reason. They know what they're doing. So send emails, call. Just don't expect them to come out today. Yeah, they're busy today. <laughs> they're, they're busy today. Yeah. And I, I want to say, they wanted to be here. Yes. Uh, they yeah. did want to be here. Yeah. Um, right. But then it's like, we just got it. We, we get that. Yeah. We've, I mean, it's not the first, you know. We've had, so we've had other guests who wanted to be on the show. But for whatever reason, they just That's didn't. just it. And in, in our industry, we, you know, we prepare, we prepare, we prepare. But in the end, we're, we got to react. Yep. So. What that means. All right. I, gotta, I get distracted. That yes, dog has a fluffy tail. All right. Until next week, um, thanks for watching. And remember, you can't spell utilities without you. <laughs>